Uh, 15 years from now, you say VR will be everywhere. Are people ready? You know, do people really want to strap these headsets onto their faces and peer into virtual worlds? They're not ready now, but they don't understand what the value that's going to be created for this or the utility of the experience is. So I think if they would understand what they can get out of it, they will be ready. And so it's going to take some time for the content and for the experience to be refined. But as that gets refined, we think this is going to be as dramatic of a technology shift for consumers as the smartphone was 10 years ago. We knew the smartphone was coming. We were two years away from the iPhone. And ultimately, it's become much bigger than what we thought. So I think that's probably where we're at in terms of VR and longer term in terms of augmented reality and AR. And we'll get, and we'll get to that. But Maha VR, everyone seems to think that games will be the first application. You've seen failed attempts in the past. We were just talking about the Nintendo Virtual Boy. Are you sure it starts with games? And what are the obstacles to adoption? So the days when I walk around <laughs> like this are probably, it's probably in a, several years from now. It is, this is a, a space where the ecosystem clearly has to mature for people to feel comfortable enough to go forward with this. We saw the precursor of this in Google Glass, and that certainly didn't have enough applications in the ecosystem to really make it useful for consumers. I can see a VR uh, a, a first phase of VR deployments being in B2B spaces, like you said, in the courtroom or the hospital, having this be a consumer play really needs to have very differentiated and very exciting apps, most likely games. But again, game developers really need to be incented in a big way to, to devote tens of millions of dollars to this. Gene, I saw Brendan Aribe, the CEO of Facebook's Oculus unit at the Code Conference earlier this week. He said the Oculus Rift, when it launches next year, could be around $1,500, an extraordinary price. In your report, you, th you said that you think that some of these firms will s eventually have to give these devices away along with smartphones. So what, what happens? You know, how, what, what does the price point need to be and how quickly do they need to drive it down? Well, initially, that's not even a starter, $1,500. And Gear VR is available for $200, which you can take an existing high-end Samsung phone and make it into some sort of a VR experience. The $1,500 version that Oculus is talking about is going to be a little bit more interactive and immersive as well. But to answer your question is that the price point needs to get down to $100, $200 for all the great experiences. We think this is going to take time. We're seeing 500 million units by 20, 2025. So this is a decade away, but ultimately the price curves are going to fl flow very quickly downward. And that should, once the experiences are available, really start to fuel the demand for the, these devices. Okay, let's move from VR to AR, augmented reality. That's, of course, overlapping a, a sort of virtual frame on top of what we see in the real world. Apple just bought a company, a German company called Mateo. Tell us what, what Apple wants to do with this company. So for some reason, all AR companies that I've seen over the years have been from Europe. So I don't know what's in the water in Europe that's causing them to want augmented reality, but it's, it's do you, a really... Do you not think it's a big opportunity? It is. Um, it, it, so... Apple was smart in doing what they're doing because Apple knows that they're going to drive this shift if there is one. And a lot of the AR companies that we've seen here before have been in the gaming sector or they've been in location-based services. But without that support of a big platform distribution, they've all fallen flat. So if AR is going to take, take shape and, and really take hold in the consumer's mind, it's going to have to be driven by some sort of big brother like an Apple. Gene, I was surprised to see in your report that you think uh, AR lags VR, but that ultimately it's the bigger opportunity. Why? It's, it's the blending of the virtual and the, the, uh, the real world. And there is applications of, of the amount of data that we see every day, the amount of information that our eyes pick up, and there's data that can be overlaid with that that can create new experiences. Think of what Google Glass tried to do, but an experience that actually people wanted to use and created value. Imagine never forgetting someone's name or being able to look at a building to know which tenant was in or a restaurant knowing the menu. It's infinite what can be done in augmented reality, where virtual reality is a good starting point, but it's going to be games, it's going to be live sports and, and uh, live entertainment, things like that. So we think augmented reality is 70% of the opportunity longer term, but it's going to take longer to get the displays right. Wow, Maha, agree with that? Is AR 70% of the overall opportunity eventually? I certainly think so. Apple is trying to own the retail store. 
So with their beacon technology that's coming out, they're trying to have better analytics for retailers to understand who's buying what and where and in what quantities and what store. Having AR on top of that, on top of the Apple platform, allows them to go much, much deeper in their relationship with retailers and commerce is naturally going to follow. I want to ask you both what you make of Google's cardboard headset. This is really a $4 contraption that allows you to insert your phone and use it as the VR, as the VR display. Is Google trying to be disruptive and is this a serious player, Maha and then Gene, uh, to compete with the likes of Facebook and Microsoft's holo holographic uh, Display. I, I love what Google is doing here and that they kind of just threw a nuclear bomb into VR right away. They're like, screw having it be commoditized in three years. We're going to commoditize it from the get-go. And if you want to start with a pizza box and make it, God bless. It's, it's a phenomenal uh, way of Google entering the market. Gene, is, is Google Cardboard a serious entry into this market? No, I think Maha hit it right. It's they're making a statement. They're showing that they want to be a, have a presence in AR. It's a great way to do it. It's a great marketing trick to to be a part of it, and it just really increases the average person's awareness of of AR.